So I've been following this John Morant story since February, back when he was suspended for the first time for playing with a gun, beating up a teenager, and threatening members of the Indiana Pacers. It cost him eight games and one and a half million dollars off of his current contract. And I'm confused and frustrated by all of it because I'm trying to figure out why would a kid from a middle class family that grew up with both parents in the home be such a freaking knucklehead? Why is he obsessed with having a gangster lifestyle to the extent that he's willing to risk the $200 million contract that he's currently on, the $39 million bonus that he just lost, along with risking endorsements from Nike and Powerade? Why is he trying so hard to be something that he's not? Who is he trying to impress? Who's motivating him to be this stupid? Who's he willing to risk it all for just to make them happy? For months, I struggled with this question because I couldn't find an answer. Then it came to me. I found the answer from the most unlikely of sources, Skip Bayless. What? Now I know, I know, most of you hate Skip Bayless and I do too. Dude is a natural contrarian, argues in bad faith, and he's an all around whiny butthole. I can't stand the guy, but every once in a while he says something that makes sense. And on this issue, he hits it out the park. I have tried and tried and tried some more to love this kid because I really love him as a basketball player. Yeah. But who doesn't? Who, who can't? You and I went back and forth ahead of his draft. Mm -hmm. I said I liked him, but, but I think Zion's going to be a greater force in the league just because he's so much bigger. Mm -hmm. And I did worry a little bit about Ja's size mm -hmm. and about his ability to shoot the three. He really struggled his first year to shoot the three. Mm -hmm. And as you say, he got in somebody's lab. I don't know what <laughs> lab he got into, but he showed me a lot yeah. about his dedication and discipline in the off season when it comes to basketball, Correct. period, end of story, because he turned himself into the NBA's most improved player, turned his whole game back around by making three point shots in his second year. I was highly impressed with that. Then the incident happened. Yet you mean incident or incidents with an I'm S? I'm about to go into that. Okay. Because I had swept all the previous little incidents under my little carpet or rug over on this side. I know you got one over there too. Mm -hmm. But I kept trying to say, well, well, it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay. And then the Washington Post continued to dig into all these incidents, and they did a. a a first-rate job of getting to the bottom of all one, two, three, four, five of these incidents. And the total impact of them wasn't just eye-opening, it, it was frightening. Mm -hmm. Now let's go back to said incidents, which we I, I just I tried to overlook because I, I, I did like this kid. And I, right. when, when he speaks like that, when I see him speak like that, I say he's got it together, he, he understands. Mm -hmm. All right, there was the finish line store incident at the mall. His mom, Jaws' mom, gets into it with an employee by the name of, since he went public with his name, Gavon Busby. It's G-I-V-O-N, I hope I'm pronouncing it the right way. Gavon Busby. He's just some kid working at the finish line. Right. Gets into it, she doesn't like his service. You know how that happens, mm -hmm. and you get a little irritated. Right. One thing leads to another, but she doesn't just call the manager, she calls her son. Right. This kid's giving me problems. I'll be there, I got you. Ja, within 15 minutes, shows up at the finish line at the mall with, according to Busby and the people who worked at the store, with eight or nine friends. Uh, I'm, I'm not talking about two or three. This, this is eight or nine. Mm -hmm. The kid has to lock himself in the storeroom, and Ja goes back in the back and is banging on the storeroom door saying, come out, I'm going to beat your you-know-what up. Uh, I'm going to beat your you-know-what you know up. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. This goes on for, the, the kid said, 30 or 40 minutes. And finally, my mom even called and put her son in that situation, knowing your son is an NBA all star, yeah, it, knowing it, your the, son, the, who the, your son is, is. Why would you even put him in that situation? This is so outrageous. It's so over the top, over the line for what this kid said. So anyway, then Ja and his group go into the parking lot and the, the head of mall security follows them into the parking lot and they get into it. And he claims that somebody in the group, I could maybe guess which that somebody was, shoves him, pushed him in the face. 
And he felt so threatened because Josh said, according to the police report filed, that, that I, I'm going to I'm going to find out when you when you get off and I'm going to come back and we're mm-hmm. going to finish this. Right. So he files a police report saying that that Ja threatened him. OK, this is insult to injury and the group won't leave the premises. Then we have the volleyball game incident in which his mom is watching his sister play basketball at a local. It's called Houston High School in, mm-hmm. in Memphis. And somebody says something to the the sister slash daughter who's playing in the volleyball game. Somebody, a student up in the sec, I think it was a female student. And once again, mom calls Ja, and here he comes with his guys. And, and they're going to, so to speak, police this incident. There's a security guard who tries to stop them from going up into the stands to confront the teenage, you know, the, the student. Mm-hmm. And one of them gets through. I, I could guess which one did get through and got up into the stands and confronted and took the phone away from the, the student and smashed the phone. And there was a report filed, charges, n- no charges were pressed. But but again, it's going from bad to worse. And yes, but Skip. I got a problem. If what what alleged in that incident is true, yeah. his mom got to start put stop putting Jaw in harm's way. Well, you got to stop calling your son. Your son is not an enforcer. <laughs> you do realize that your son is John Morant. You do realize that he's an NBA player, a very good NBA player, and you're putting him in harm's way. Because guess what? You must run and call Jaw. And guess what? One day. You gonna catch the wrong person you are. on the right day. That is correct. And then I'm sorry, yeah, it's a yeah. misunderstanding. Yeah. Ain't gonna help nobody. No, and your son's gonna be gone for a long time. Yeah, he yeah. might be gone. Might, so I, we yeah. hope that don't happen. But stop putting uh, him I, in that I situation. So yeah, Skip nailed it. Now I'm sure he's unaware why, but he summed up John Morant's issues perfectly. What Skip is describing is a son husband and an attack dog. Now, for those who don't know what a son husband is, it's a son who acts in the emotional role of a husband to his mother. In short, it's when a mother imprints on her son the way a wife would imprint on her husband. Most of the time it happens between single mothers and their sons, but occasionally it happens when the mom is married. And for the overwhelming majority of the time, it's just that, an inappropriate emotional bond. But in rare cases, it becomes physical. But there are some celebrity examples of what we call a son-husband relationship. There's the rapper Blueface and his mother, Carlis Safford, Scrappy and his mother, Mama D. And then there's the rapper Jim Jones and his mother, Nancy. She told me how to kiss when I was younger. She told me how to tongue kiss when I was not younger. It wasn't no instruction. She showed me with her mouth. Like she- She kissed you? It's my mother. No, I'm just asking. Now, I can't go any further in explaining what it is, aside from those examples, because I'm not an expert on the issue, but even if I was, breaking it down would take us off topic. But if you want a better understanding of what it means to be a son husband, I highly recommend watching videos from Dr. Tia San Johnson, who's an expert on the issue. Not only does he perfectly describe the role of a son husband, but he also defines what I'm going to be talking about next, which is proxy violence or pit bullying. I'll post the link in the channel description. Be sure to check him out and subscribe to his channel. But yeah, John Moran is a son husband. Even though his parents are happily married, he's emotionally bonded to his mother as if he's her husband, provider, and protector. And we know this because it's a woman's natural inclination to call her husband when she's in an altercation, not her son. As a mother's natural instinct should be to nurture and protect her child, not set him up to fight her battles like he's her champion or gladiator. That's something a man does for his wife, but that's the role she has him in. But as I mentioned earlier, he's more than just a son husband. He's a pit bull or attack dog. And what I'm referring to is proxy violence. But in the context of this discussion, proxy violence is when a woman calls on the aid of a man to jump into a conflict she initiated to fight for her, not in defense of her. It's when she uses a man like a weapon or an attack dog against another man as a means of putting him in check. And that above all else bothers me the most because it's so short-sighted. John Morant, prior to these incidents, was on pace to having a billion dollar career. Now he's on the cusp of losing it all. And over what? Some smart mouth kid working at finish line? A kid trolling at a high school volleyball game? This is the bullshit she's calling her son to handle? These are the reasons why he's risking his career. That witch can't possibly love her son because no woman that does love her son would use him as a weapon. 
or put him in a position where he could lose everything he's worked for, including his life, just because she's mad. So to answer the question, why would John Morant, someone with everything to lose, risk it all? Because he's the kind of dumb his mother raised him to be. She's the reason for all of his problems. Now I know he's done some things outside of her influence, but clearly he's learned this way of handling things from watching her, and she encourages it when she calls on him to punish her enemies. But I also have to put some of the blame on his father, because that's his wife. He should have checked that ship the first time she tried it, because he has to know she's destroying his career. But ultimately, the buck stops with Ja, because he's a 23-year-old man, and he, regardless of how he was raised, should be better by this point. But then again, this is the way that black men are conditioned to be. Dennis Sperling calls it a simp chip, where black men are programmed from youth to live in servitude to reprehensible women. Now I touch on this concept as well in this video, I'll post the link in this description, but yeah, black men are conditioned to be soldiers of the gynocratic order, to do whatever the female authority figure in their life tells them to do without question. And I suspect that Ja, even though he was raised with his father in the home, was brought up to do the same. Even though his parents are married, she's clearly the patriarch of the house. She's the head of the relationship. So all this talk about him sitting down with his family to get his conduct under control ain't gonna help because his family is the problem, particularly his mother. And as long as he's tied to them, as long as he's tied to her, he'll never do any better. But that's all I have to say about it. What do you have to say about it? Leave a comment in the comment section and let's have a conversation. Okay, so you've heard me say this a million times. So if you like this video, please give it a like and leave a comment in the comments section and share the link on your social media platforms. And if you are new to my channel, please subscribe and turn on that notification bell. That way you'll get alerts every time I upload a new content. This is the Layman's Journal. Thanks for stopping by. I'm out. Hell! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! And while I do appreciate you sharing, subbing, and leaving comments, I'm gonna ask that you take another step further in keeping the channel going. I set up a membership plan for those of you who would like to offer further support in the development of this channel. It's not anything expensive or special, I'm just asking for 99 cents a month, which is enough for me to continue doing the work that I do here. Help me! Help me! Help me! In the future, there will be additional tiers with added benefits, but for right now, I just need your support so that I can cover basic costs. So please, sign up so I can continue bringing you awesome content. This is The Layman's Journal. I'm out.